y you speak of uh, the codependency of our two countries uh, as if it is, is a rather dysfunctional relationship, but actually, uh, it occurred to me in reading your book, uh, you know, I know many fine marriages which are based on a certain codependency. Uh, why is this a bad thing for the U.S. and China to be codependent? Well, <clears throat> it's a good question, but I think um, codependency, as I understand it, uh, in human relations can, um, if not treated, it can become unhealthy. Mm -hmm. A blurring of uh, identities between each other. You depend so much on the other person, you lose sight of who you are. Um, leads to some unease, tension. Mm -hmm. uh, you might even say imbalances in the relationship. I, I did write in the New York Times a few months ago um, that, um, and, and I was told after I wrote this that I would no longer be welcome on the op-ed pages of the New York Times that America needed a, th a third plenum moment. Um, that was a little extreme, but I, I couldn't. Well, you're sp you mean a planning moment where yeah, we could we, actually. We need, we need to, 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 to think more strategically as a nation and try to understand the ramifications of, 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 of that strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and my favorite um, thing that's missing in our strategic vision is this, this concept of saving. Yeah. We do not save as a nation. I think one of the things that actually encouraged me the most coming out of the third plenum was that they finally seem to be facing up to some of these social pressures. Mm -hmm. uh, addressing the, the one-child family planning policy uh, nationally as opposed to you know, pilot uh, exemptions. Um, addressing this uh, residential permit system which, which really disenfranchises this some 270 million migrant workers from getting benefits when, when they, where they work. Um, addressing the suppression of um, interest rates to give Chinese savers a, a real return after inflation. Uh, and then finally, they, they really seem to be willing to tackle the funding problem which they claim has been central to the lack of a safety net by <clears throat> announcing that they would increase the taxes on their state-owned enterprises up to 30 percent by the year 2020 and that, and that frees up a lot of money to fund uh, what's missing. So here Matt via email asks which country will rebalance first and why do you think that is? China's moving out of the blocks. Mm -hmm. they, they will rebalance first uh, and they're making progress right now. Does it surprise you to hear yourself say that China may win the sweepstakes here? Well, it depends on how you define the sweepstakes. Well, I mean, I mean if, if they're going to manage to rebalance ahead of the United States, that certainly is a credit to them, is it not? The structure of the economy is changing. So right now, not to get too um, caught up in, you know, in mundane statistics, that, you know, economics, mm -hmm geeks like myself like to look at. The services sector, which is the neglected sector of, of China, um, the smallest of any major economy in the world, last year uh, finally became the largest sector in China. That, those are the signs of a transformation that you want to see. Mm -hmm. 